I grew up in New York and I grew up going to Broadway. I used to take dancing classes at the June Taylor School of the Dance on 56th and Broadway. And then my folks used to pick me up and take me to Broadway matinees. And my mother, who's a dancer, her name is Lola, particularly loves shows, just as always. And so on Saturdays, we'd pretty much land up going to Broadway shows or we went to Radio City a lot too. But that was so very much, I grew up seeing Broadway shows in the late 50s. The first Broadway show I ever saw, I think, was My Fair Lady. So that's pretty great. I remember seeing Fiddler on Broadway as well. I think I saw Fiddler many times on Broadway, actually. But it was always the ones, not the grand ones that I remember so well, uh, but the sort of lesser known ones. I remember seeing uh, Do I Hear a Waltz? Uh, and I remember very clearly seeing Ray Bolger in All American, <laughs> Margaret Layton in Chin Chin. <laughs> I obviously was very upset by Chin Chin with <laughs> Margaret Layton and Anthony Quinn. Chris Durang loves that story. I can't understand how I landed up going there. I saw all of the Neil Simon plays, <laughs> endless Neil Simon plays, which I quite liked. I actually admire his work. Um, I do remember seeing Seascape by Edward Albee <laughs> with my parents sitting right in the front. And also all those great musicals like Sweet Charity with Gwen Verdon by Cy Coleman, uh, who I'm very happy to be working with now. I remember seeing, um, uh, what was it? Oh, well, all the Foss the original Chicago. Yeah. Gwen Verdon and Cheetah Rivera. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw Jenny with Mary Martin, Jenny falling down a waterfall. Uh, I Love No Strings, starring Diane Carroll by Richard Rogers, uh, and I must have been around 11 or so, but I just loved it. I remember they sang Maine is the Main Place, and I thought, oh, it's so wonderful. Yeah. And I loved them. Uh, and we didn't even go with any specific itinerary. It wasn't like, you know, my parents were pretentious people or anything. I always joke that, you know, no one's parents says to them, please, darling, become a not-for-profit theater writer. It's what we really want from you. I think I very much became a playwright because I grew up seeing plays, you know. And uh, so you begin to, one's imagination goes into that realm. I mean, it was great. It was totally great. You know, it was interesting because years later when my play, The Sisters Rosenzweig, was on Broadway, I always thought that play seemed like it was written by somebody older than me. And I thought it was because I had grown up. It was my imagination of the plays that I had seen when I was growing up. You know, someone like Jane Alexander walks on stage in a lovely living room and, you know, she's elegant and you laugh and you cry and she goes off. Um, but I loved going to plays then. The thing that I remember as a child a lot was I couldn't believe grown-ups made their living doing this. You know, I thought you grew up and then you became a doctor or you became a mother or, you know, you became, but the thought that you got to act, you know, or do that sort of thing, it just seemed so great to me. Um, and it always seemed to me sort of a reason to live in New York. The reason to live in New York was going to the theater. The first play I had produced was called Any Woman Can't, and it was produced at Playwrights Horizons when it used to be on the Y on 50th and 8th Avenue. And it was right across the hall from the Clark Center. And how I got my first play produced was Louise Roberts, who used to be the receptionist at the June Taylor School of the Dance, became the receptionist. She ran the Clark Center. She was a very famous woman among dance circles. And uh, she ran into my mother on the street, and my mother told Louise I was writing plays, and Louise said, send me Wendy's play, and she gave it to Playwrights Horizons, and uh, Bob Moss was then the artistic director. And my first play was done in 1973, before I went to Yale Drama School. I loved it, and that's why I went to drama school, from having that play done. Going to the Tony ceremony was thrilling for me because, you know, you never assume, oh, you know, I'm going to win a Tony award. You just, I mean, I certainly never did. Uh, I remember the entire thing. Uh, William Ivy Long, who's my great friend from drama school, made me a dress, who's a many multi-time Tony Award winner who did the costumes for Chicago, made me a lovely dress. And uh, Andre Bishop was my date. And I was extremely nervous, and all I kept thinking about is should I wear my shawl or should I not wear my shawl, and how do you get up and wear a shawl, and uh, what should I say and what shouldn't I say, and how long do you speak. But uh, it was thrilling. It was completely thrilling.
Huh? What went through your head when you heard your name? Oh God, should I wear the shawl or shouldn't I wear the shawl? <laughs> the winner of the American Theatre Wing's Tony Award is The Heidi Chronicles. the first woman to win a Tony Award for Best Play. Uh, another, uh, a couple won at the Hackett's for Diary of Anne Frank, but I was the first woman uh, to win it alone. Uh, did it change my life? Well, then you're always like the Tony Award winning, you know, author. It's an honor to be here tonight. Uh, I'm a New Yorker and my parents uh, took me to Broadway matinees every Saturday. <laughs> so this means a great deal to me. You know, when you're an artist, you have to always go back to work, frankly. So you could only, you know, it. ultimately you go back and face a page and then you deal with production and you deal with, you know, availability of actors and set designs and opening a show as you always do. So in some ways it makes you possible to continue in your life as an artist. Uh, I want to thank my family who took me to the theater. And one last word, which is for women playwrights, I think this is great for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> Can you tell me uh, where you think Broadway's going? Should you I... know, I think Broadway's changed a lot, but it's still there. I mean, what I'd like to see is more new American plays on Broadway. Uh, I think that's extremely important. But, you know, every spring, there's always an article that says Broadway's back and we're so amazed that you think it's always there. We're there. People love plays. And um, my conjecture is people will love plays even more. The more there are 500 satellite channels and, you know, internet and this and that, live communication, what touches the heart, what touches a community, what makes people laugh together, what makes people cry together, becomes more important.